All right, I'm going to start by sharing my screen here. Be sure that we get things moved around here. And here we go. Just to verify once again, you can see my PowerPoint and you can hear me, everybody. Yep. Thank you. All right, wonderful. All right, so here we go. We are moving on to our analog. We have two labs left. Um, and um, they're, they're pretty involved here still, uh, very theoretical. So I plan accordingly. The lectures are a little bit shorter, as you know, but we're spending a little more time in the lab. So I take my attendance. We, papers are coming in and out. Um, everybody seems to be caught up with the homework. I think we might be done with the homework. I'll have to look again, but we might be we might be done with the homework. Um, and I got a few people still turning in a few labs. Check uh, your D2L just to see uh, where you're at with that if you didn't get those uh, some of those labs into me, all right? I do want to start with the sequencer lab review. And I think a lot of people are really understanding the sequencers, you know, kind of how they they move the data through the file. You know, maybe you're just not seeing, you know, how to fully apply the application of these. So what a sequencer is good for is, you know, like part tracking with barcodes where you would scan a barcode and, and it's got a number and that number means something could, could, you know, could mean a lot of different things. And then you would save that number because you want that number saved for later for later on sometime could be, you know, further down the assembly line that day, or it could be, you know, years in the future that you want information about that, about the thing that you scanned, but that, but that's how you would, um, you know, capture data, modify words. Um, you could use sequencers to set up operations or to control operations, things like that. Same with uh, first in, first out, you know, those kind of things. Position advanced via the SQL. So I told you to think about the SQL as the sequencer, all right? So that needs to, you know, turn on and off in order for the control, okay? Um, so the SQI, that's when we're doing the input, needs the SQO. So the SQO will work all by itself. The SQI won't. The SQI needs an SQO if you, if you want to use an SQI because they share the same control. It says the SQI is externally indexed. What does that mean? It doesn't, it doesn't work by itself. If you, want the if you want the control to work, to go to position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, you need an SQO. The SQO can go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all by itself. The SQI can't. So that's, that was some things with that, and we'll review a little bit of that lab. Um, so registers, remember that's a word, or, or a double word, a dent. Um, the file length is specified, and um, they can be shown as binary or decimal. So here's register one, register register three. When you get more than one register, it's a file. So this is the first word, the second word, and third word. A lot of times we're looking at them as decimal, or is, is binary. Those are the, the two that you typically look at, although we can look at them as hex and you know all kinds of stuff here. I can look at this number right here as decimal. I can look at it as octal if I want. I can look at it as decimal. I can look at it as binary, you know, you know, whatever. We we can look at that, we can look at that number a variety of different ways. And here's the numbers of how you convert binary into decimal and decimal back into binary. So when you when you when I'm talking about a register, which is the word, here's the bit, here's the file, a bunch of words, in the decimal in versus the binary, everything that I'm talking about here, scale of one to ten, how do you feel about all that stuff? Binaries and decimals. Hexadecimals. Feeling good about that and how to use it? Okay. Well, just remember that this is the ones. This is the twos and this is the fours. There's no eight, 16, 30s, there's nothing here. So one plus two plus four is seven, okay? This one's got a one, a two, no four, no eight, no 16. 16, 17, 18, 19. That's how they, we convert. Registers. So, you know, when we were doing the FIFO, first in, first out, that was related to, you know, an entire word. We were shifting you know, 16 bits or 32 bits or whatever words up, down, you know, seven was coming the eight, the eight was moving to 19 spot. They were moving up and down. Entire words were shifting within the file where the bit shift left and the bit shift right. We were looking at a single word and we were, we were shifting right or we shifting left just within the word, the individual bits. So the file operations shift words, the bit shift shift bits, okay? And once again, the sequencer was an extension of that. 
expand the SQL file for bits and it's horizontal versus vertical. You know, that was the thing. Do I have a um, a dent here? You know, that that's whether we're we're using a dent, not to open my mask or, or the SQL file. Remember that if I look at this as decimal, or I look at this as binary, this one right here is this one. The second one is this one. The third one is this one. That zero is this zero. So whether you're looking at it from right to left or from top to bottom, that's just showing the same word either shown, you know, um, on your horizontal or on your vertical. Sometimes you want to look at, and I mean, the, the benefit of looking at down here is this is this is the eighth bit. This is dot eight is one. Up here, I got a count. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one right there is the eighth. Can I explain why we use a 16 pound FF777? Oh yeah, I can, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> Very good. Yep, thank you. This right here is the dot eight. So that's why they put them vertically here so you can know which individual bit is here without having to count it across there, all right? But you gotta get used to looking at it, whether it's vertical or horizontal, all right? And I will get to that mask in a minute. Data example one, and I got some examples here. Let's see what I got. I don't know what I got here. It says the value of one, two, three is it would be, you know, the first word that we wanted. What is it? Well, it's less than these numbers, so it can't be any of these. You know, we don't have, can't have any 128s because 128 is bigger than 123. So 64 plus 32 is 96. 106, 112, 120, that would put me over. 122, 123, I got that. 1111011, that is the equivalent of 123 because 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 gives me that. I could also come here, you know, once again, here's 123 is my decimal here. I like to use a little thing here it's one 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 four ones zero one one four ones zero one one that's my conversion of that all right so um this is what is 16 f f f f f you know as that and i think that's asking us here you know what is 16 f f f f as a binary mask well this is four bits, so that's that's the first four right here, and then the FFFF is the second four here. The next F is the four here, and the next up is the four there. This F is four more here, four more here, four more here, four more here, and we know that FFFF is just one 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 one, or excuse me, because that F is one 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 one. This F is one 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 one. That F, one, 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 this F over here. So this is just all ones, okay? So if <coughs> you see this as your mask, it's just all ones. And that means everything's gonna pass. That's a mask that's just kind of gonna act like everything's normal, all right? A lot of times you, you want that, all right? So does everybody feel good about this concept that that mask is just all ones and that's just kind of that normal happy state? Scale of one to ten, does that kind of make sense what I'm saying? <coughs> All right. Sometimes you want a mask and uh, it gets more complicated. Um, mask off with FFF or zero, zero, zero. All right, date example two. Um, oh, yeah, we did that. Hang on. If I went like this, by the way, was that original hexadecimal? Well, I can go right here and I can make this hexadecimal. And I can make it, you know, F, 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 and that's what it looks like hexadecimal. And anyway, but what does it look like binary? It's all ones. That's what it looks like there. It's all ones. But hexadecimal here, if I wanted to make this, if, if for example, 
zero 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 zero. If I had a sixteen bit card, and once again we're using the we're using these binaries to control a sixteen bit card. Well, this is a DIN. It's got thirty two bits. So all these zeros right here, you know, the card doesn't even we don't even use those outputs because our card only has sixteen outputs on it. For so if some reason we were trying to control a card. We could just zero all these out and then no data would be passed to this word because we're using it to control outputs. We don't have outputs 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We don't have those outputs anyways. All right. Well, what does that look like? Once again, that looks like 0, 0, 0, 0. The, whole, the first word is completely masked out. The second word is all Fs. All right. Um, and that was data example two. All right. It says how to typically call a file with file conversion. A lot of times I use binary to get decimal then type in the decimal because when I come here and I want to do, you know, a number and I'm decimal, I'm binary here and I don't really, I mean, I don't like working in here. I don't really want that bit on. I don't really want this bit. Wait a minute, is that bit five or is that bit seven? Uh, let's see, zero, one, two, three. All right, I think I got it right. What? What's this bit right here? But I want the zero, you know, then I can expand this and say, oh, oh yeah, I wanted bit eight to be zero right here, right? Okay. And then I got, you know, that's now I got a good, you know, now for whatever, now I got this looking like what I want to. And then I need it again, or maybe a slight difference. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to type in all that again. No, I like to go right here, get my decimal version of this, 46. 46,271. And then I can just type that 46,271 over and over and over again. And then boom, I populate all those ones and zeros really quickly. Okay. That, that's kind of the way that I like to go back and forth between them. So this is asking, you know, what if we wanted a mask? You know, what if for some reason we wanted one, three, five, one, three, and five? Well, yeah. So once again, I got to come here. And I gotta go. Um, I would probably make this all. I don't know, just go across with zeros for now. And then I wanted bit one here. One zero one two three four five. I don't know is that right? Something like that. All right. So there I did that. Still took me a little while, but now when I got this number here, it's forty two. So if I wanted to generate something rapidly. And I had a file and I wanted 42, 42, 42, 42, five times. And then I wanted to move on to the next one, which is what? One, two, and three. One, two, three, four. What's my new number there? I could just come here if I wanted to. Binary. One, you know, one, two. I don't know. I'm sorry. This is one. This is what I want. Binary. You know, one, two, three, four, one. This is zero. And then I could come here again. I could get my decimal. It's 30. And then I could fill up, you know, 30, 30, 30, 30, like that. So I could go back and forth. These numbers are easy for me to type than all these zeros and ones. All right. And a lot of people were doing that in the lab. Okay. So I haven't forgot you yet, Joanne, but we'll get there. Part B. SQ, I must be true to make the SQ true. So these work together like this. That this is just like an equal sign I was telling you. When this gets equal, then this can advance. But remember, this is what advances the position. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. This has nothing to do with it. So this has this has nothing to do with the sequencer. All this is is an equal sign that's sharing the same control. And because it's sharing the same control, whenever this goes to position one or two or three, this goes with position one or two or three. All right. So. And, and that next part, we had to have that equal sign for the to, for the data lock. And so here we got my my project here. I got a sequencer, and I got a done bit here, and a done bit here resetting the timer. And this timer is ten. That's a really fast timer. You can't even see it move. It's so fast. And reset. So this this position here is going. One two five six seven eight. 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 It's just cycling. One two three five six seven eight. And so these numbers right here, it's it's looking at these numbers rapidly. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, it just keeps looking at these numbers. Every ten, one, 
every 10 one thousandths of a second, right? One one hundredth of a second, it's looking at it, okay? And so I just use an equal. And so the storage one was coming in from like um, the HMI. And these numbers right here were getting moved to storage two. So if the HMI matched, you know, these numbers as they get moved through storage two over and over and over and over very rapidly, I just turn on the unlock light and the unlock light to stop the timer. All right. So that was one way to do it. The other way to do it was to use the SQI. Look, it's the same. This has equal. This has SQI. The difference is the combination lock numbers are in the SQI. In the sequencer, there's no numbers. It doesn't need any numbers. This is just getting done. Bang, 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 bang. One, two, five, seven, eight. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. There's no numbers in here. It's just going to a, a new position that doesn't actually have any numbers in it. But because this position keeps going one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, this position keeps going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And therefore, you know, once again, I'm probably taking in storage one, which was off the HMI. And if it was equal to these numbers here, which were on the input file, equal one two five seven eight one two five seven one seven. If those two were equal, it turned on unlike lock and it opened it. So that was kind of two ways to do it. Um, and so on part C, as I explained these two different ways here, basically with the sequencer holding the numbers, or with the SQI holding the numbers, realize you need a sequencer in both cases. Um, how are you feeling on a scale of one to ten about either one of these solutions right here for the combination lock? And I think everybody did it pretty much. I think everybody pretty much used a sequencer. Um, I think pretty much everybody put your numbers in the sequencer instead of putting your numbers in the sequencer input in SQI, correct? Did anybody use the SQI? I think everybody just used an SQO and then like an equal sign. You did an SQI, there you go. And really, I mean, so you could do this, like here's my SQI file and, and it's, counting through these numbers. And that's what this is doing, it's an equal. It's just trying to compare your HMI to this. And you're like, well, wait a minute, what if I put the numbers in the out in the SQO and I put the same numbers in the SQI? In this case, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, This you never do anything with these numbers. If, if you were to put those numbers in the SQO here and, you, and this was the project, even though it's pounding through all those numbers, it, we, we're never doing anything with them, you know, so it still it still worked, but it didn't work. Part D. So a couple of different ways to do the traffic light. Number one was you just had a sequencer. Once again, here's a pulse timer and it was one second, I think. One second. Yeah, one second pulse. Goes to position one, then two, then three, thousand four, thousand five, thousand six. It just keeps going through this position. And so what you did is you just figured out, you know, your traffic light, that at first you needed, um, you needed, it's hard to see here, you needed the, this light on, one, two, four, eight. You needed the, the the fourth bit and the second bit on. Two plus eight is 10. So you got 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 16 times. So basically 10 got left on, is this pulse through 16 times. On the 17th hit, it then went to um, nine, and nine is, you know, it's got a, it's it's a different nine is um, <clears throat> one zero zero one instead of one zero one zero, and then it just went through, and and then it it ran nine 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 nine. Looks like that for about five seconds, and then it went to thirty two, and then it went to sixteen, and went and then so then it just started over. All right. So basically you were turning on all these lights and then these lights and then these lights and then these lights. So here's my quick question. Just want to be sure everybody understands. Because the sequencer was going to the output. It says, where was where were all these numbers going? They were going to the local five colon zero dot data. They were going to the output module. So does everybody, once again, on a scale of one or 10, understand that this number 32 turns on lights on the output module uh, on a scale of one to 10. You understand? 32 turns on lights on the output module. What lights does it turn on? Yeah, you guys are getting it. It turns on, here's 32, and I wanna look at that as binary. It turns on the, it turns on the fifth light, and that's it, the dot five light, okay? Because it's sending it 
to the output module. That's that is the way that that is working. All right. So the other way to do it, which was pretty clean when people like, you know, they kind of looked and they're like, wow, this is really uh, clean and uneventful. You know, they were like disappointed because it was so easy, <laughs> I think. Well, you still have your 10, your nine, your eight, your 32, your 16 and your eight. And that's what you had here, your 10, your nine, your eight, your 32, your 16 and your eight. But here you had like 16 instances of the 10 and four instances of the nine and all that. Here you only have one instance of the 10, one of the, you only, only have one instance of each of these. And what did you do? Well, you had a timer and instead of, you know, hitting the 10, you know, 16 times, you use that 16 for the timer preset. And then when that got done, you notice the sequence timer done here, it advances the output module because we want a different number in the output module just like you did here, you know, except we just used it a million times. It, it advances the number sent to the output module, but it then just um, sequences the timer preset. So the timer goes from a 16 second timer to a four second timer. And therefore it keeps nine in there for four seconds. Boom, the timer hits done. This goes to eight. This goes to one. It keeps eight in there for one second. Boom, it hits again, timer done, it sequences. This goes to 32. That turns on those outputs for eight seconds. So when this done, it was doing two sequencers, a timer file in there. Okay. So this is more complicated, two sequencers. How do you feel about this on a scale of one to 10, the way that this is working? Seeing a little bit? You don't need, yeah, instead of, instead of, you know, typing 10, 15 times, Let's just use 10 for 16 seconds. And instead of hitting nine four times, let's just push nine in for four seconds and then eight for one second and then 32 for eight seconds or whatever, you know, this says. So that, that's what these were doing. Now, I had a question for the mask. All right, now here's what's important. Once again, that you wanna be sure you understand the mask and the way this works. I am right here pushing out numbers to the output module. This, this, uh, the file, you know, this 10 right here, or this 32 or this 16, or whatever, it's one zero one ones and ones and zeros. Those are going to the output module. So every, every bit on the output module, there's 16 outputs, is getting a zero or a one. We're telling the light on the output module to turn on every single 16 of them to turn zero or one. Look here, what's this? Guess what we're doing? Here's light three, light four, light one, and light two. We're using an output more than once because this output 11 right here, and let's see if I got these pulled up. Maybe it's uh, a little bit easier to see here. Um, here's, my, here's my data file here. Okay, here's my data file. Everything's going to the output module, some number. This data three, it's part of the output module. This data seven, it's part of the output module. So this run is telling the lights to either be on or off. I don't know, let's say they're on. And then this right here is telling the same light or output you know, number three to be on or off. You can't have two outputs. You can't have things coming on or things coming off. Does this make sense what I'm saying here? Uh, yes or no, that these outputs, are the same as these outputs. You're using an output twice. And we know that we don't want to do that. You only want to use an output once. But if we're using it twice, we can mask it out. And my mask was called masker, which was, um, so you mask out those. Yeah, let's mask those out so that we're, it's like we're kind of not using that. And so what was my mask there? It was FFF. Uh, F F F seven 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 I think seven 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 seven. Let's see. What does that look like? Is a binary. Well, um, bit zero one bit three four five six seven eleven and fifteen. Those bits don't get written when this thing goes. When this pushes 
um, to the output module, we're skipping, guess which bits we're not writing to? We're not writing to three, seven, 11, and 15. We're not writing to three, seven, 11, and 15. So even though we're using that output more than once, we're not overwriting what the sequencer. So that's why we're using the mask. Otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. Some of the times it wasn't really working like you thought it was um, because you were turning it on here, but turning it off there. So it's an on or off, okay? So that was kind of uh, one way to do it. Let's see if I got something else going here. Um, th there was, you know, another way to do it here was just do a move with the mask. And so once again, you could just have moved this number here, 2056. I don't know, let's see what 2056 is. I'm gonna come here and make this decimal and I make this 2056. What is that? Is binary. It looks like I'm moving a one in a one that I, I'm making, I'm, I'm moving, I'm turning those outputs on and I was masking it with this, with this mask right here, which I'm guessing is, was letting those overwrite the sequencer output module. You know, whatever the output module of the sequencer was saying, this was overwriting it, all right? But it wasn't overwriting anything else, 34,952. 34,952. Was it 34,952? Hang on. 349. I bet it's got, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so it wasn't over, these, these other lights here, all these zero, you know, where these zeros are, all those other lights were already being used for greens and reds. So it wasn't going to overwrite those. It was only going to overwrite the blinking lights there. So that would, so Joanne, does that kind of make sense why we're using that mask or the whatever FFF a little bit or not? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, you guys were, it was in hexadecimal and that's why there's sevens there versus a regular on or off bit. Yeah, the, the sevens, the seven on that, and I'll put it back here again. Let me go back to uh, hexadecimal. Seven, seven, seven gives me the zero here, the zero here, the zero there, and the zero there, which were the blinking lights. And right, so because hexadecimal is like 16. Yeah, and, and rather than try and work it all out, I just um, use my little converter here on the on the PLC to do it. Yep, but you it makes sense now. By, you can work it all by hand if you want to, certainly. <laughs> no. I know. <laughs> okay, so that was that. Um, homework review. I don't know what we had. For, oh, I got it right here. So uh, resolution, we talked about the smallest change in input signal that can be measured. And we talked about current loops that are sourcing and syncing. So the analogs are the same. There's there's a current supplied or, or um, the module is supplied or, or it's uh, sunk or sourced, just like it's like we've done uh, with our other modules. We talked about um, the um, resolution. And so I just want to be sure that you understand this. So, you know, 16 is a is a INT. Eight it was a SINT. You know, but you know, back in the day when we were starting here, they only had like four bit resolution. So if you wanted to, you know, and so that's you know, one fifteenth because you got four to the second power or eight to the second power. Eight to the second power would be you know one one twenty eight. 16 to the second power you know the, the more bits you got the the high the better resolution you're going to get because if we had five volts and we wanted to chop that five volts up into parts and we wanted to look at it you could see that you could take five and you could divide it by you know four bit that four bit has 16 you know there's 16 counts okay so five volts divided by 16, you get a resolution as shown here. Each one of these is 0.333. So I was had something and I was reading and I needed to read like 0.2 volts. Uh, uh, it's, I'm not getting close there. I'm, I'm, I'm really grossly approximating what 0.2 volts would be because I can only chop that volts up that much. All right. But. If I had eight bits instead of just, you know, zero, 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 zero to one, 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 if I had zero, 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 four more zeros all the way up to one, 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 
one, one, one, one. Well, then I could take that five volts and I could chop it into 256 parts, all right? So if I chopped eight volts into 256 parts, or it was five volts divided by 256, I'm at 0 0.019, 0 0.019. 0 0.019 is way smaller than 0.333. So just by going to eight bits, we can really get, you know, much more accuracy with how this gets divided up. Never let's go to 16 bits. If you divide five volts up into 32,500 something, each increment is pretty, pretty precise after a while, okay? So does everybody feel good about this example here of how we were getting our decimal, the binary uh, representation in our resolution right here, of how I chop that up, how we feel about that on a scale of one to 10? Yeah, all right. Okay. I mean, just think if we only had two bits, yeah. zero volts or five volts. You know, if we only had, you know, one bit, zero or one, and I got five volts. Well, all you're measuring is five volts or zero volts. But if what if something came in at two and a half volts? You can't measure it. And so increase your bits counts and, and start chopping up more and more and more and you get a better resolution. Quiz review was something here. A bit shift register shifts bit serially from bit to bit. And they just they just go right, left to left to left to left to left. For the bit shift or section shown, the shift register length is given in bits. That's my length in bits. So it would be showing 20 bits. You don't need to, so you know, if you have a, a 32 bit word, you don't need to use them all. You can, you can use 20, whatever you want. 10, 5, whatever. A bit shift register operates synchronously. Synchronously, the information is shifted from one bit at a time within the word of words. That's true. For every bit shifted in, one is shifted out. The data entered must be shifted the length of the register before it is available to shifted out. So the one goes all the way down the conveyor and off you go. BSL and BSR operate on the same bit shift array as long as they use different control files. Nope, you need the same control. And they're going to work together. What's the main difference between the bit shift and the FIFO? These shift bits and these shift words, which are 16 or 32 bits. Jog forward is activated when it's closed. So when if I put when I close that, I put a one in here, and and, and that was my source, which was going in. The one was going into the uh, to the array right here, and it says I pushed it six times. So I ended up with one 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 one. I ended up with six ones right here. All right. And then it says push button two is push two times and push button two is bit shift right. So now it starts moving to the right again. So the one that was heat, the two ones that were here because it got pushed two times, get moved, boom, boom. And now I'm back to only four ones because two got dumped off, dumped off the end. And the ones came in here at this because the length was 10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's where they came in right there. So the new ones came in here. They didn't come in here at the end because the length was only ten. They come in where the length is. So I shifted six in, and then I shifted the other way. Four, two dropped off, and and, and they ended up going into there. A false transition of input B causes the data to file to shift one position toward the starting bit of the dress because it's we're FIFO loading first in first out what is likely wrong with the program given errors in line in two so you've got errors here and you got a fifo array and when you come over fifo array here it says fifo array needs to be a dent array okay and so that's what we were having some problems you guys are getting <clears throat> you just can't make it a dent you need to make it um have some depth to it when toggle one and two are activated what value is moved it says two, it's 7.35 um, plus two. The answer is not 9.35, it is nine, okay? Because this seven gets rounded, there's, there's no real number. Seven plus two is nine. And then the data block contains 20 bits. So that's the length, 20 bits. So that was the, uh, that was the quiz right there, all right? Um, uh, let me take a look at that one. I think I, I didn't, that's upgraded. I might not have graded that. All right.
So that was what we learned about um, word shifts, bit shifts, and how applied to sequencers. We'll use sequencers again when we do the variable frequency drive. But when we went into analog, so analog um, is where we once again where we have an infinite number of values. It's not just on or off. We're going to bring in like 19.65 or something like that. We're going to we'll be bringing in um, decimals and it's going to be using real numbers. All right. And there's voltage sensing and current sensing. And this um, depends once again on if you have uh, sourced or sunk um, modules and sensors. So it's, it's we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, I don't have a thermal couple to show you, I wish they did. Um, and analog input and output devices have an infinite number of values, all right? So a typical analog input and outputs vary from, you could go from zero to, to 20 milliamps. You'll see a lot of sensors that are four to 20 milliamps. So we'll talk about the difference. And also you could have them from zero to 10 volts. And so you could have, you know, four to 20 sensor, you could have a, a value coming in of 8.63, all right, 8.63. And if you have their number, if you have the resolution set, you know, then you can convert that to something. And, and like I showed you with the resolution, and, and our units are set up to be pretty high resolution, you know, or you could have a value coming in of, of uh, 8.63 volts, and that would mean something, okay? Um, but there's other ones that you would use here, but I mostly see four to 20 milliamps sensors and zero to 10 volt sensors. Does anybody see these or see anything different at work? any kind of analog sensors, anything different than that? Four to 20s or zero to 10s is what you would typically see for your analog for your analog sensors, all right? Um, so you to accept the sensor, you can accept that voltage or amperage and you convert it to a digital signal. You need a processor because the computer works is on zeros and ones, so we gotta make it digital. The analog output module accepts digital signal, converts it to an analog signal, because once again, the computer works digitally okay so some of the quantities that you measure with analog might be temperature you know and it might be you know 75.38 degrees right? and speed that changes and pressure changes and level and weight and position these are all quantities that might have decimal points on them and they might change a lot and if you're doing weight you know so you got a process where you're um loading up a product and it has to weigh you know 85.5 pounds or whatever you, you can do it. You can use a sensor to, to measure it, okay? The main element of the analog input module is the analog to digital converter. And so you just got to think about this. Think about where's the analog? Is the analog, okay, so for the quiz, is the analog going to digital or is the digital going to analog? Remember that the, the PLC or the computer is digital. And so the peripheral devices are what's analog, all right? So you have different uh, options here. Like I said, there's bipolar, which is negative 10 to 10 or negative five to five. It has the negative numbers, but a lot of stuff that you'll see is just unipolar. It's just zero to 10 or zero to five, all right? And, and you'll have resolution, it refers to smallest change in the input signal. And so you're talking about 0.3 millivolts. So we have really good resolution. It, you know, you're gonna be centering a very small change in voltage and you're gonna be able to equate that to a number exactly, all right? So that's what the A to do. Unlike voltage input signals, current signals are not as sensitive to noise. So why would you use, a lot of times I use zero to 10 sensors, zero to 10 volt sensors, but why would you use a four to 20? A four to 20 loop is not as sensitive to noise and, and it might be better for longer distances, all right? Because you can use shield twisted pair would you know, be recommended for both. But um, you would put your power supply, you can have module supplied or sensor supplied. Um, but that's why you might see a four to 20, maybe for some distance, all right? But you gotta remember, you are have a resolution of 0.3 millivolts. And so every little, every little dinky change in voltage or millivoltage is gonna change what what the actual weight is or the actual pressure or temperature that the PLC thinks it's reading, all right? And so if you have any kind of an induction going on on these wires running across here, well then that little change in millivolts due to other little fields interacting with it is gonna screw your measurement up, 
All right, that's the way that that works. The main element of the analog output module is the digital to analog converter. So once again, that takes the digital processing of the CPU and then it turns it into something analog. So a lot of times you think about analog as measuring something like an input, temperature, pressure, speed, all that kind of stuff coming in. But sometimes you wanna output um, an analog. And so some examples of where you might wanna output an analog is you might wanna turn a valve just a little bit, or you know it might wanna turn off and on to, to adjust for flow or you, you, or electric motor, you might, might wanna speed up like a DC motor or slow down. You, you just don't want it on or off, open or close. You want somewhere in the middle, partially open, partially closed, all right? So here's something that looks like there's a tank here with a valve. And so maybe there's water leaking out of here and in, in, or pumped out of here. And so you the PLC output module can open this valve or close it or constantly, you know, every tenth of a second or every hundredth of a second or every second, it can keep opening and closing this to keep that level perfect if it's being pumped out here. And the sensor here, the analog input would give you a little bit of a range of, you know, of where you would want that. So this would be a little bit an example of a feedback control loop, all right, of how that would work. But like I said, a lot of times you think about analog inputs but there is, there is analog outputs that you would want to use. All right, analog number systems use real numbers, and that's the floating point. So when you use a real number, you're gonna get decimals, all right? So just be aware that when you come here and you make this right here, you can make it a floating, this uh, number, because it's gonna be a real number right here, okay? So when you go to your edit tags, you'll come in here with your analog channel in your outputs and all, Th these will be set up automatically, but if you're pushing it to an output, you want to use a real number. And um, so here you go in the lab. I want you to use real numbers. So when you're record, you know, kicking these temperatures out and everything like that, I want it to be a real number. I want to see, you know, some decimals. You don't need to truncate it for me, okay? So um, uh, we had uh, so somebody who almost finished their lab and we were then messing around with dents and reels. Just be sure that you're pushing out, you know, reels here at the end, okay? And that'll give you the decimal. Those are my floating point numbers, all right? So when you set up your analog module, there's channels per module. And, you know, a lot of times there'll be two or four channels in a module. You're not going to see like 32 channels on an input module, probably for a PLC, um, unless you've got something really fancy going on. But, you know, two or four channels, uh, your input current and your voltage ranges, are you sensing for 20 milliamps, or you're setting it up for voltage, you know, how's it working? Or you set your output current, your output voltage. Are you, are you pushing out current or you're pushing out voltage? And so when you go through and you set your module up, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, you know, those are the things that you definitely wanna be sure that you set up correctly, all right? There's input production. Um, it gives actually conducting voltage so you can short these and have to reset them. There's internally fused. We talked about resolution um, and then, you know, so there's, there's some adjustments that can be made here, but another thing I want to tell you, I have not calibrated the voltage sources. So I think we're using zero to 10 voltage, 10 volt sources in there, and they might not be putting out 10 volts. So you're supposed to get like a high, high light come on when you get close to 10 volts, it might not be putting out 10 volts, okay? And so I will, I, I might have to uh, get in there and uh, tweak your program a little bit, just be aware, we might not have, have 10 volts on that, which is gonna mess up the way that this works, all right? So, common mode rejection. So remember that noise, that's when that signal's coming down the line and we're doing analog and it's the resolution is very high. So any little change in there is gonna be recorded and it's gonna affect our answer. And so a lot of times noise is picked up equally in parallel wires. Like if you're coming here and, and you see the noise where they're in parallel wires, there's, it, it's, uh, the engineering in there is made to reject that, okay? Twisted pair wires are used to ensure that the type of noise is equal in both wires, and therefore it can be sensed and then rejected, okay? Um, it says review setup here. So here we go. I got an analog input card. I don't know what I got set up here. Um, 
oh here's my analog what do i got going here oh here's my analog input card right here sorry okay so when you go and set up your analog car once again you want to disable keen it's going to go in the slot where it's at the big thing that you want to do here is your configuration all right so there's showing the different channels here uh, so this is going to mess you up i'm gonna tell you right now heads up ready there's a difference between zero and one they're marked on the lab zero and one all right and so if you you gotta set you gotta be sure to pick the zero or the one if that's what you're setting up okay or else when you turn the knob it's not going to be turning on zero or one hopefully that makes sense zero and one same with the output okay and so what i'm going to go ahead and set up four here whatever i'll set up four so the input range i said i like to use a lot of zero to tens right here all right and, and that's it'll take anywhere from zero to ten and then you can put in a little bit of an offset here and, and, and try and we, we could probably correct that low voltage with an offset if we wanted to. But what this does is it will take your scaling of high, let's say the most this can read is 10 volts, and the most it can read is zero volts, and it will ratio these automatically for you. So let's say my low was zero. And let's say my high temperature was 100, you know, so I'm reading, if I'm, if it's reading 10 volts, it's 100 degrees. And if it's reading zero volts, it's zero degrees. It automatically makes those ratios for you and solves it. So everybody ready? What is five volts? If I get five volts, what is my temperature? Yeah, it's 50. You can do it in your mind. Um, because it's that way, but the card does it for you. Like, well, what do we need a card for? That's really, that's really dumb. Well, let's say this read from two to 7.5 volts, and it was giving me an engineering of 16.5 to 234.5. Okay. Um, so now I ask you, you know, what is 4.63 volts? Everybody, what's the answer there? Oh, uh, well, I don't know, I do a little math on that. Yeah, you do, got to do a little math on there. <laughs> it's it's setting up an equation here to get the slope of this line equated to the slope of this line. The, the thing automatically does it for you, okay? Now, when you look, what we learned in our lab is, remember, two volts to seven and a half volts, that's still within our range of, you know, our range is still zero to 10. So we're within our range right there. That's not a problem. We got up to 10 volts available. But when we are, we're looking at the answer here because when we're reading our weight or we're reading our temperature, I don't want to know that I weigh 5.63 volts. You know, that's not what you want to, you want to know that, you know, you weigh 230 pounds or that you, you know, that the room temperature is, you know, 97 degrees, 0.6 degrees or something. So, the engineering here is what we're looking at, but you might actually want the voltage, but you don't get it. It's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of gone. And so in the lab, we create a scale with parameters uh, to get this back to, to 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 do to do what this did. This took these two, the range here, seven and a half to two. That's five and a half. It took this range of five and a half volts. And it made a linear line that matched the range here. And that's what we're going to do with scale with parameters to kind of get the voltage back. And then you have your alarm configuration where on that channel you can make high, high, low lows to to um, when it's reading, not the voltage, when it's reading, you know, your weight here or your temperature here. Let's say the temperature gets up to, you know, too high. You can set an alarm configuration here that you know if it gets to 220 degrees i want an alarm to come on and notice how it set the high high alarm here and then the high alarm might go there and it put it and the low alarm might go at you know 40 degrees and the low here might go at 30 degrees so notice on my if this, if we were doing temperature what this is doing is it is giving me alarm based on the temperature 
So think about this. It's really given an alarm based on the voltage, but we don't measure temperature and voltage. We want to know the temperature. You know, we don't want to know how many, we want to know how fast we're going. We don't want to know how many volts we're driving. We want to know how many miles per hour we're going. So when you set your alarm configuration, this needs to be set up in what you, you know, temperature, miles per hour, whatever you're, you want the alarm to come on at. All right. Does that make sense? All right. But what is this voltage, by the way? We'll talk about it. This because this is some voltage. You know, that's what the computer is processing is some voltage. All right. So you'll get in here and you'll be setting up a card here and making it happen. It's it's pretty uh, straightforward. But I got a couple of items here. It's a scaling example two. Well, I'm going to come here. I'm going to start with two apparently. Let's see what I got here. Okay, I don't know. You guys probably got these things here somewhere. All right, scaling example two. Yeah, let me put this up here. All right, so an analog temperature sensor is going to read from zero to 212 degrees. So, you know, I'll make this like a thermometer where we got zero degrees to 212 degrees, right? Okay. And then it wants to um, voltage will be scaled from zero volts to 10 volts. All right. And so basically, you know, this just makes increments and then, you know, whatever the ratio of these increments are, it's ratioed to this one. So that when I get everybody, you know, five volts here, if I get five volts right here, what's the temperature here, everybody? If I get five volts, what's the temperature right there? 106, you just cut it in half. Yeah, it's easy, right? What if I get, what if I get 6.8 volts? What's my temperature here at 6.8 volts, right? Well, it's it's all scaled and it's all set up. You know, because because both of these start at zero, it's just going to be scaled that, you know, 212 degrees is is to 10 volts as X degrees is to 6.8 volts. It's just it's just ratioed like that. You got 144.66. Yeah, you're cross multiplying like this. So you got 212 times 6.8 volts equals 10 volts times X. So basically I'm just dividing this side by 10 and I'm deciding this side by 10. So if I come here and I go to 12 times 6.8 equals divided by 10, I get 144.16 degrees. How do you feel about that one? Scale of one to 10. Anybody else? Checks out, it does. And, and you think about it. You said five volts was 106 degrees. And this is more than that, and it's more than that. So it seems like it makes sense a little bit, all right? So that is the way that this is going, that this card automatically ratios, you know, these two out like this, okay? Well, the issue is that when you get a sensor, it's gonna it's gonna have a, a relationship there to, from voltage to let's say you want to do temperature that's fine or pressure or whatever and it's going to have a range in voltage here that the sensor wants to read outside of this range the sensor might be bad or not bad it might not give the kind of results it wants because outside of here you know it it might go like that here it might be perfectly linear and then you get outside of here and then it goes like that so you really only want to read here where it's linear in there if you get outside of here you might it might it might not be might not be the way the sensor works like that it might not be linear outside of there okay so then what you're going to get is um this all right so i think this is the next one here hang on and it says um, an analog pressure is going to read pressure from 10 to 155. All right. So we're going to set the module according to manufacturers disregard voltages less than 1.5 and greater than 8. And so what is the PSI per volt? 
And so what that's saying is the PSI, we're reading from 155 PSI to 10 PSI, PSI per volt. And it is eight volts minus 1.5 volts, okay? Which gives me 145 PSI per 6.5 volts. So what's my picture look like? I'm, 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 before I made the temperature up and down, I'm just laying this one on its side. It said 1.5 volts DC is equal to 10 PSI. And it said eight volts DC is equal to 155 PSI. Okay, that's what that's saying right there. That's, that's what it's asking. And it is 145 divided by 6.5 gives me 22.3 PSI per volt, okay? That's how that works, 22.3 PSI per volt. So what's it asking for now? It says, what is the voltage at 97 PSI, which is right here, 97 maybe here? Well, before we did this fancy cross multiply thing, because they both started at zero, okay? Well, that cross multiply thing doesn't work here anymore because you know these starting and endings are kind of all over the place right so it says what is what is this well let's look at the difference between here so this was this was moving up this is 87 psi i got 97 psi minus 10 psi equals 87 psi Okay, so this is 87 PSI more than there, okay? And so what am I gonna do with this 87 PSI? I'm gonna divide it by 22.3 PSI per volt equals 87 divided by 22.3. I got 3.9, 3.9 volts, okay? So what does that mean? Does it mean that this is 3.9 volts? No. Remember, I started here. So I moved up 87 PSI, and therefore I must move up 3.9 volts. So 3.9 plus 1.5 volts equals, I got 5.4 volts. So right here, 5.4 volts would give me 97 PSI. So I had to take the ratio And then when I got it, I had to add my starting point to it so that it, it moved it up. The, 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 yes or no, does that make sense? I had, to, I had to add my answer to my starting point in order to get the answer. Does that kind of make sense? Yes or no? All right. So here's the beauty of this. This math is, can get really ugly, but the, the, uh, the card and the setup is great. What was this? This was 1.5 to 8? Yeah, you just come right here and you go, oh, I got uh, 1.5 up to 8. 8, and my low engineering on that was, it was 10 to 155. 10 PSI to 155. There you go. All that math I just did is done. You, you throw out any number you want here. What was the number they said? What was it at? at 97 PSI or what caused that to 97, man, this thing automatically ratios it, scales it and kicks out your answer. All right, that's what's going on here, all right? And so it wants to know, you know, what, because not, but, 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 but this uh, can get a little ugly, you know, when, you know, we, we've set this nice situation up right here on the on the uh, analog input card, beautiful right there. There it is. There it's just beautiful. It works fine. Well, sometimes it doesn't, and and that's what I, what I'll show you here. It says write the equation of the line and graph it. So I'm going to go with um, where am I starting at here? At ten. So I go ten, twenty-two point 
25, 40, 55, 70, 85. Am I doing this right? 100, I thought I had one that I had done. Yeah, um, I missed something here. 85, 95, 100, 115, 130, 145, 160, maybe something like that. And if I go um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if I go um, volts here, and if I go PSI here, all right? So what do I got? I got 1.5 VDC is um, 10 PSI. And I got 8 volts is 155 psi 40 so maybe in here somewhere right and that is my line right there okay so what's my equation of that line equation of line is y equals mx plus b this is my y intercept and this is my slope that's what this computer is doing for you. It is calculating all this for you. Does this ring a bell, the y-intercept and the slope, the y equals mx plus b? It's coming back, isn't it? This is my y, this is my x, okay? So at the y-intercept, so, you know, at the y-intercept, um, I can write my equation, so I can start to write my equation, y equals my slope, we already figured it was 22.3, 22, 3, 22, 3 Every time I go up 22, 3, go over 1, 22, up, over, up, over, up, over. So y equals 22.3x plus b, okay? And then if I want um, my, to, to solve for that, I've got these two points, so I can just pick one and solve for it. So I know that when y is 155 right here, when this is 155, this is 8 plus b, okay? So I'm trying to solve for b. So then I got, you know, 22, I got 155 equals, let's go 22.3 times 8 equals 178.4 plus b. I'm going to subtract 178.4 from each side. So I'm going to do minus plus 155 I get minus 23.4 equals B. So what does that mean? That means that if this were to keep going right here, you know, all the way to, to where it hit this slope right here, it would be at negative 23.4. That's, that, that, that's what that means. So my formula is Y equals 22.3 X minus 23.4. That's the equation of that line right there. Okay. So that is what that is what this is doing for you. Okay. So one more, and then, then I think we're done. So bit, hang on in there. Let's see where we're at. It says the sensor reads 1.3 volts DC. It's which is below the recommended read. All right. Now, what is the pressure? It says calculate two ways, all right? So it says, okay, the sensor reads 1.3 volts DC, which is, you know, here's one and a half. It's down here somewhere. I'm now off the scale. I went too low, you know, so what number is that? This only gave me to 10, and now I'm below that, so somehow I need to figure out what that number, what, what this number is down here, it's below what I set this up for, right? And so, you know, what do I got to do? Well, I got to realize that I got 1.5, you know, minus 1.3. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 0.2 volts DC, you know, too low. I'm, I'm now 0.2 volts, you know, you know, un underneath here somewhere. I'm, I'm point two underneath there somewhere. You know, I'm 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 in, I'm in here somewhere. I'm I'm off the reservation. Okay, so I got a couple of I got a couple of options. So before I did this as an 
PSI per volt. I can get it in volts per PSI, you know, because that's what I'm, I am right here. So, I mean, I can go ahead and do that. And so instead of doing, you know, these two and getting 145 over 6.5, if I, if I do it the other way or just take the inverse of it, I get 6.5 volts over 145 PSI. And once again, that's just, instead of doing PSI per volt, I'm just doing volt per PSI, right? I'm doing it that way, okay? And so if, if I do this and I go 6.5 divided by 145 equals, I got 0 0.045 volts per PSI there, right? Okay, and so what do I do? I've got 0.2 volts. So if I take this and um, I, you know, I realize that I got 0.0, I can just divide this, right? Volts DC, divide, divide that, 0.2 divided by 0.045 equals, I got another, if I, if I, if I realize once again, I'm 0.2 volts under, in every 0 0.054 volts, I gain a PSI. So 0.2 divided by that, I end up with another 4.44 PSI. Okay. And then, so what would I do? I have to subtract that. Because here, I was at 10 PSI. I'm going lower than that. So if this was 10, I'm off the reservation, I'm below it. So 10 PSI minus 4.44 PSI gives me 5.56 PSI. And if I look at my chart right here, yeah, I'm below, I'm gonna be below 10 PSI here. I'm gonna be down here at 5.56 if I went below it, all right? Or, they said do it another way. Way I could always just do y equals 22.3x minus 23.4. That's what that's what we had going on right here, right? So y equals 22.3. My x is my voltage, 1.3 volts minus 23.4. And there might be a rounding here. Let's see, 22.3 plus 1.0, oh, 22.3 times 1.3 equals minus 23.4. Maybe what I do, 22.3 times 1. Point, so old calculator, minus 23.4. I get 5.59, yeah, 5 so a little bit off PSI. So I could just, use my equation that I figured out here in order to, because with this equation, I can keep going this way. If I wanted to do 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 volts, I could just plug it in here, or I could do less, you know, one volt, half volt, quarter volt, all the way down to zero volts. I could use my equation, or I could just realize that I need to do a little more math here and, and, and use, you know, this slope, whether it's volts for PSI or PSI per volts, and whatever answer I get, I have to subtract it off of these numbers if I'm going this way, or I have to add it onto these numbers if I'm going that way, all right? And you're gonna have to do this in the lab to get high highs and low lows and get things working because when we go in here and it says, you know, high engineering 155, low engineering 10, it wants an alarm configuration here that is more than what you've set here. So you're going to have to do a little math here, come up with an equation of a line or something like that to get these numbers. You'll see when you start getting this set up. I know the first couple of people who were doing it were starting to get into this number thing like this. So who, um, so my first couple of people was, it was um, Robert and Brandon. Does this little math here seem like it's going to help you get this high, this alarm configurations and stuff going a little bit or not? Or still, still need to take a look at it. What do you think? Yep, going to help you? Yeah, okay. 
you, you, the, the, the issue is that if you had this nice little box right here and you got a line coming, you know, from zero to here and zero to here, man, that, oh, sorry. You know, if you got this nice little box here and you're going zero to a number here and zero to a number here, that box, you know, that box is great with a line in it. But when you got to step outside of that box and these numbers aren't nice, got to do a little math, a little to get your slopes. Okay. That's what that, that's what this is. And you can come back and watch this. We did this. Oh, finally, we got one last thing that I'm going to let you guys go. Anon instruction. This is what, and people work through it and they, that seemed to make sense. Um, it's similar to a function block. And so what an add-on instruction is looks like this, okay? So here's my, my program that I've made right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a new rung in here. I drag a new rung down here. And I'm gonna put my add-on instruction right here. So what is my add-on instruction? If, if I go to add-ons, I've got this thing called SCP that, I, that I've got. There it is, it comes in. This looks a little bit like the function block from Siemens, where it wants input, min's input, max, scale, min, scale, max. And what this does is this takes an input, given your min's and maxes, so there's your min's and your maxes, just like um, we did here. There's my, you know, um, where's my other page that I was working off of? I got a min and a max here, and a min and a max here, and it, in the in the computer converted it. So in here, I can come in and I could go, um, what was it? It was 1.5 to 10, and then it was converting from eight PSI, or eight, it was converting from 10 PSI to 155, okay? And so it, you would take that in and convert it, but you could go backwards with it, and that's the beauty of this. So this was taking, this voltage and making this PSI. What we're doing then is we're going to put this back in to get this so we get our voltage. It'll go either way. This scale with parameters will go either way. It'll subtract the two and subtract these two and it'll make Y equals MXB automatically for you and bang, there you go. And what is the math in here? Well, you're going to have to go and set that up. It's an add on instruction right here and there's logic in here about how to subtract and multiply and add and everything like that. And it's going to have you know, your tags and stuff in here. It's just like a little function block um, that we didn't see much. Okay, uh, before I let you go, one last thing. When you're setting this up, be sure that you make, that your enable ends need to be visible, all right? So when they come in, they, you need to be able to, uh, you, you need to be able to see those. So you, you'll see when you start setting these up, that some, of the, some of these need to be visible and some need to be not visible. Otherwise, when you put this in the main routine right here, nothing will come up, all right? So that's the visibility is a big thing on setting these function blocks up. Woo, that's a lot, I know. Um, the uh, lab's kind of a way to get into this and, and figure out how this works. I would put a fair amount of time aside for it um, and maybe read ahead. So. That is what I've got for you. I'm willing to take some questions though right now. Um, if somebody's got anything, what do you think? Anything, all right. It's like I'm back in high school algebra. Yeah, okay. Well, the quiz is open if you wanna take it. Um, and you might wanna look at the math a little bit ahead of time to be sure you get your numbers and stuff. It's up to you how much math you wanna spend. I can help you with it, so. That's what I got. You can go take the quiz or you can stick around and ask me some questions. That's what I got. You can turn, yeah, turn in lab 10, please. Yep, that'd be great. Um, Peter, have you had math 121 yet? ELTE 121? Okay. Then you're fine. You're good with it. All right. What else? Anything else? All right. I will stop recording. And I'm going.